Hi! In my last couple of videos, I've done a lot of talking about misogyny and defending women in general, but today I think it's time to do a little misogyny of my own. I'm just kidding. I would never do that. As if one wasn't enough, Ben Shapiro seems to have committed mitosis and created a brand new source of bigotry and funnel for corporate funding. Congratulations, Ben. It's a monster. Today we're gonna to be talking about Brett Cooper, one of the newest additions to the Daily Wire's cast of goons. And don't worry, I already know what you're thinking. Brett Cooper? More like butt pooper. Oh if you're unfamiliar, The Daily Wire is Ben Shapiro's own personal propaganda website that was started with a very healthy, very normal, very working class investment of $15 million from a pair of fracking billionaires known as the Welks Brothers. But Ben himself claims that The Daily Wire is completely free from corporate influence and reports exactly the way they want to. It just so happens that they align perfectly with the fossil fuel gremlins that give them money. What a lucky coincidence. The Daily Wire's actual YouTube channel has nearly 3 million subscribers and still struggles to maintain any kind of consistent viewership. I guess that's what happens when you have a man named Jeremy Boring making videos like this. We're going to build a future. Not lament the past, because the dirty secret is the past was just another time. The Daily Wire has tried to launch a litany of different kinds of banal content targeted to old boomers who just hate. They're just evil people. How do you live like this? Oh, the fossil fuel money. But back in February, Butt Pooper, sorry, Brent Cooper started her first video on the Daily Wire channel called Do Men Belong in the Pro-Life Movement? I guess after spending the last 10 or so years as a less than successful actress, she decided her true calling was to be racist on camera. What must an interview with the Daily Wire even be like? How much do you hate gay people? If you could take one civil right from the black community, what would it be? What kind of tree are you, and what corporation would you allow to deforest you? Ben must have seen something in Brett Cooper, other than his own creepy little face, because he too tried to make it in Hollywood, and failed after everyone laughed at how bad his script writing was. That's real, by the way. I would talk more about her debut video on the Daily Wire if every interview she conducted didn't boil down to, I mean, I'm alive, and I wasn't aborted. I wouldn't have liked to be aborted because then I wouldn't be alive. So yeah, abortion is bad. Everybody got to support life because I have a mother. I was born, I'm here. And if I wasn't, if I was aborted, I would not be here. So it's everybody's job to help defend an innocent person who can't hurt a soul. Yeah, great interviewing, Brett. Let's get you a whole fucking show of your own. This also might come across as nitpicky, but apart from the actual interviews being just nothing. The audio in this video is just fucked. Today I am here in Washington DC for the 2022 March for Life. We're going to be going around and talking to attendees about why it is so important for men to be involved in the pro-life movement. This is a multi-million dollar operation funded by big corporations and yet they can't even monitor their own audio. What the fuck? Hey man, I mean Keep wasting that billionaire money on incompetent bullshit content. So because Brett is just so charismatic, or because she stands way close to people in public, they decided to lock her away in this creepy Disney Channel TV show bedroom and force her to, like, pretend like she's streaming or something. At least I think that's what it is. And that's how you know it's a good show, really. Her show is called The Comment Section with Brett Cooper. Not a good name, but we might as well take a look at uh, her videos to see if they're good. They're not, but... We're looking at them. Sorry, press subscribe. So yesterday was transgender day of visibility. Did not know that was a holiday, but to put it lightly, there was a lot going on on the internet. TikTok had trans flags everywhere. Nickelodeon had like 12 year old trans kids dancing. Twitter was chaos, but I mean, what's new there? God, she really is just like formulated to appeal to the worst, most out of touch kind of person. Twitter is pretty crazy, but what else is new? Thank you, Disney adult Twitter user circa 2011. To make it easier on you, I have picked out my three favorite moments from this momentous holiday. Man, you really gotta love the pure fucking vitriol she says that with, huh? It's so fucking gross to me that conservatives always pull this same snarky bullshit whenever they're talking about something that might be important to marginalized people. Like, oh, it's some momentous holiday. Yeah, real sly way of being transphobic because you're too scared to say it out loud. I love plausible deniability. It's my favorite way to get away with murder. So while yesterday was Transgender Day of Visibility, it was also the last day of Women's History Month. And on this day, the Washington Post decided to erase women. So they posted, pregnant people at a much higher risk of breakthrough COVID, study shows. 
Sick, dude. Bread is a turf. Yeah, you're so into defending women and women's rights when trans people come up, and yet you defend Roe v. Wade being overturned. We'll get to that later, though. I had a pregnancy test today, and it came back negative. I'm a single dude and not ready for a baby yet. It must have been the Taco Bell. <laughs> it's a pregnant person right there. Just drink some smooth move, and you'll be just fine, my dude. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Wow, that is funny. I really like that you put the Jurassic Park clip in there. It made it a joke when you put the movie clip in there because I know what I remember that from movies. Also on the Transgender Day of Visibility, it was announced that Caitlyn Jenner would be joining Fox as a contributor. AP first dropped the news here. Listen, to be honest, nobody seems happy about this. I mean, conservatives are angry at Fox for not being conservative enough. The right is mad at Fox for not being conservative enough. Kind of telling on yourself when you just admit that conservatism is when you don't acknowledge trans people. <laughs> We're coming back to JK Rowling here. Somebody says, as always, like every other trans visibility day, I wish a heartfelt f you to JK Rowling and Caitlyn Jenner. Things are going great on the internet. Hey, um, why do you think Brett decided to highlight and talk about a tweet that had one like. It's almost like they want to like target trans people on the internet or something. Almost like that. It's not exactly even worth the editor's time to put it on the screen when all Brett has to say is Things are going great on the internet. Things are going great on the internet. Thank you, Butt Pooper, for your amazing commentary. The last internet moment that deserves recognition is this post from Beta O'Rourke. Sorry, Beto, sorry. He posted this photo. Dude, this picture is so bad. I'm not even trans and I think this picture is transphobic. I think Beto O'Rourke should go to jail for this picture. I hate when liberals just give conservatives fucking ammo like this. It's him wearing a t-shirt that says, don't mess with trans kids with some, you know, Texas symbolism on the shirt. People had a lot of thoughts. Okay, I know I'm only like four minutes into the first video I'm showing you, but I can't hold it in any longer. Brett is so fucking bad at this. She is so bad at making videos. <laughs> he posted this photo. Don't mess with trans kids with some, you know, Texas. Like she's actually not good at what she's doing right now. She's bad. I absolutely see now why her channel is mostly YouTube shorts because it takes advantage of the more accessible algorithm while also avoiding the reality that she has no camera presence. She has a producer who sits across from her and watches her do this and her commentary is like, yep, that just happened. Say things, say anything. What the fuck? Jack Posobiec. Just simply put a box of Crest 3D white strips. Oh, hey, Jack Posobiec, the, the Nazi guy who started the Pizzagate conspiracy theory that Democrats eat children that are delivered to them in pizza boxes. You like his tweets? Cool. Normal. This person says, is this a mugshot from another DUI? <laughs> Which, I mean, come on, it is funny. It is funny. It is. No, it is, though. Thanks, Brett. The left is obsessed with changing our entire society and culture for less than 1% of the population. And the right is determined to, to keep that from happening. No, Brett, you're being very dishonest here. You might be able to tell by the way she hesitated, but Brett is obviously keeping some secrets. Uh-oh. Oh no. The right in America wants to do so much more than keep the left from changing the country. If anything, the actual only legislative change being advocated for is from the right. Liberals don't want to fucking change anything. Leftists do, but we don't have any fucking power. Republicans want to force trans kids to become so marginalized that they never come out, plain and simple. And they target every age and every demographic of trans people with laws to further that marginalization. And Brett is literally at the forefront of this. She knows, but she's trying to act as if she's in the middle of some issue when there is no middle. You either support trans people or you don't. You're either right or you're wrong. They don't need a visibility day when they are screaming through their woke megaphone literally ever flippin' day of the year. We are wildly aware of their existence. And she replied with, my thoughts exactly. The only reason conservatives are so aware of trans people's existence is because they want to legislate every part of it and they want to oppress every part of it. Stupid marginalized people always asking to not be marginalized anymore and to be accepted. 
freaking shut up. I don't, I'm, that annoys me. The trans community doesn't want to be treated as equal, only better than the rest of us. It's pretty sad. Yeah, because trans people are totally treated normally and fairly right now. Can I just vote for a straight day for all of us regular people out there? We need to marginalize straight people more. If they think they're regular, they're not. You guys are fucking weird. The next video we're talking about is Brett reacting to a video about pick me girls to try to prove that she isn't one. Like I could give less of a shit about the pick me discourse. She's just a bigot. <laughs> this skit has a half a million views and it attempts to explain being a pick me girl. So I thought I would react to it as your resident pick me girl so we can watch together. Anyway, if you guys don't want to talk about Justin or me or my dope music career, then what do you want to talk about? You're a pick me girl, Anna. You hate other women and only feel validated by the attention of men. It's not your fault. You're a toxic byproduct of a patriarchal society that protects men at any cost. How dare you both accuse me of internalized misogyny? Okay, I'm like 90% sure she's not even watching a video when they cut to this footage. Like, who looks like this when they watch stuff? It's like someone pretending to watch something. <laughs> I also weirdly hate that she has two angles. Like they're right next to each other. You don't need that. And they both don't look very good. And the lighting is bad. Why is the only girl who was given a Daily Wire show of her own have like a girl's bedroom as a set when Ben Shapiro and basically every other right-wing commentator who's a man has a desk and an office? <laughs> Not for nothing, but what the fuck is that? <laughs> See how willing you are to throw women under the bus? That was one time, Melissa. One time. And guess what? Katie's leg healed just fine. Oh yeah, sure, she has a little bit of a limp, but if you ask me, it looks great on her. When are you gonna let me live that down? It was like a month ago. This is the face of a conservative when you tell a joke in front of them that does not involve transphobia. Please donate today to help a conservative in need understand humor. What the hell is that? Come on, we have to show you where you came from. Pick me, pick me, pick me. I don't know, all my best friends are guys. I don't understand girls. I'd rather lose my right to vote than lose my right to bear arms. Oh my God, what is this place? Welcome to the byproducts of the patriarchy. Whatever's going on here, stop it immediately. Although that was funny, the girl who was like, I'd rather lose my right to vote than my right to bear arms. If I had to choose, she's not wrong. <laughs> No, she's wrong. She's extremely wrong, just like you are. Holy shit, conservatives will do anything to hold on to their dumbass guns. I don't get it. What are you gonna do? Rise up against the government? Yeah, dude, they have fucking drones now. Even before they had drones, they'll just drop C4 from a helicopter, like in the move bombing. How many guns are you gonna fucking need to defend yourself from that? So now there's, there's also a whole TikTok genre explaining pick me girls, making fun of pick me girls. They have like pick me girls in different situations. I did a deep dive. When you discover what a TikTok trend is, like what, who is this for? It's almost like it's made for the same billionaire fossils that keep it alive. Hashtag triggered, because apparently this is me. Uh, but here's another girl explaining it. All right, this is how to spot a pick me girl. Listen, we did one on pick me boys. Look, we love equality here, so we got to do pick me girls as well. Hi, my name is Chloe and I am in fact your new best friend. And I like to think I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. Okay, I feel like pick me girls are a lot more like emotional. Like they'll almost make it known that they're like a pick me girl. I mean, they say the same stuff like, oh, I'm not like the other girl. Hey, hey, Brett, you're, are you allowed to pause the video? Dude, which is fine. Does someone have a gun aimed at you off screen? Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. So, there's a lot of news coming from New York City this week, but what's new, honestly? What the fuck does that mean? There's always news coming out of New York City. Yeah, since the beginning of New York City as a concept. Eight and a half million people live there, you know. It's kind of a big place. Uh, they talk about how they want an LGBTQ curriculum in every school. Not kidding. I suggest that all these posters be posted in every school. I suggest that there be a banner as people walk, as students walk into their schools saying celebrate LGBTQ pride. And I recommend that there be an This guy's like a knockoff Rudy Giuliani. school um, with, a, with, a, with, with an identical program, perhaps a film, so the students could learn about why we celebrate LGBTQ pride. And of course, I recommend that LGBTQ issues be integrated in the curriculum in every school. 
Okay, groomer. Are you fucking serious? It is fucking insane to me that every video that Brett makes has this veil of centrism. When she's on the fucking Daily Wire, there's no mistaking where her political beliefs lie. But every so often she'll let it slip. Yeah, dude, having a banner in a school that says, maybe gay isn't a crime. That's grooming. Do you know what grooming is? Like what, showing kids a film about gay history? Do you think there's gonna be sex in that? Do you have fucking rabies? Are you rabid? What is wrong with you? I despise so much that conservatives will call people like Eric Adams fucking leftists or radical. Eric Adams is a cop and it gives an excuse for their fucking half-ass surface level bullshit policies that don't actually help queer people. Putting a fucking banner in a school is not gonna help in the same way that redistributive policy that we need would. But but of course that's not even on the table for monsters like Brett and her handlers. In their mind, the banner that does nothing is the end of the fucking world. And it's ultimately because they think gay is something that can be taught or chosen. All kids are just straight by default, so if you tell them that gay people exist, they'll just choose to become gay. And that's grooming. This grooming narrative is so transparently homophobic, and it's the same kind of homophobia that we've been fucking forced to deal with since the 50s. If you're gonna try to indoctrinate people into your brain dead ideology, at least get some new material, right? Get new material, plus L, plus ratio, plus I banged your mom and your dad, plus press subscribe. I mean, come on, did you not learn from the Democrats last week that put up gay billboards in Florida? And they got ratioed to high heaven and they did nothing. Yeah, man, the Democrats got ratioed and that's why this is a bad idea. Shit like this is such a waste of time and resources because it could be better spent countering everything that Brent is saying and advocating for. But no, we just have a sign that says gay. Cool, man. Come to the city where you can say whatever you want. Yeah, try saying you're a Republican in New York City. That's not gonna go over well. Yes, dude. Republicans are the most oppressed minority. You can't even say you're a Republican in New York City, you'll get cancel culture murdered. Except for the fact that, you know, like 22% of New York City voted for Donald Trump in 2020, which is almost 2 million people, which is basically the entire population of Idaho, double Montana's population, triple Wyoming's population. But conservatives don't know what the fuck numbers are, so I guess I'm wasting my time. Like this guy had some edits for the billboards. I can see the billboard now. Come to a state with higher rent, more traffic. Hey, um, you see who that tweet is replying to? There's two possibilities with that username. That's all I'm saying. This guy makes a good point. Wasn't there just a hate crime on the subway where a person got beaten up for being gay? Yeah, like I said, 22% of the city voted for Donald Trump. But even still, if you want to get into a hate crime competition, I don't think New York and Florida even compare. But also, it depends if you want to include cops in that, because <laughs> cops sure don't. The irony is they are proving the bill isn't about don't say gay. Otherwise, the billboards would be illegal. Because don't say gay literally means if you say gay, you're going to jail. Come on, man. Like, don't ask, don't tell. Just don't, just don't ask. And don't tell me about it. That's not homophobic. Come on, just read the bill. You don't understand. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. Y'all, this channel has been growing like crazy. I could not be more grateful. It's absolutely wild. We've only been doing this for a couple of months. Yeah, Brett, you're right. It is so weird that you only just started posting in March and already immediately have a channel with 350,000 subscribers. That's crazy. It's almost like you work for a morally bankrupt puppet organization that's funded by billionaires and run by think tanks that isn't afraid to shamelessly plug your dog shit content on every possible platform while also potentially, allegedly, maybe botting your account with views and likes and subscriptions. Allegedly, possibly. Her social blade only looks like this, so that's probably normal. Guys, today we are going to talk about everybody's favorite Native American, <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> It's not less racist if you're still making fun of a white woman. So many conservatives do this where they think it's totally okay to just be super offensive when making fun of Elizabeth Warren, who claimed to be Native American, who actually isn't. But that doesn't mean you can just do fucking racist ass edits like this. What the fuck? She is one of the Democrats that is obviously having a meltdown about the potential of Roe v. Wade being overturned. She was so triggered that she decided to host an impromptu riot pep rally is the best way that I would describe it. Okay, if you insist on continuing to use the word triggered like it's 2014, can we at least reserve it for when there's not a reason to be upset? Conservatives think that a gun buyback program is literally fascism, but actually think it's totally fine and good when state governments prevent you legally from receiving medical care. Remember in 2015 when the gay marriage decision came out and former Supreme Court Justice and now dead ghoul Antonin Scalia 
rest in piss, said that gay marriage was a slippery slope that would lead to gay men marrying dogs. How is legally barring medical care of any kind not a slippery slope, but gay marriage is? Uh, overturning Roe v. Wade being pro-life is not just a Republican issue. Hey, remember when I said conservatives don't know what numbers are? Nearly 70% of the entire country across state lines, across party lines, support Roe v. Wade remaining the law of the land. Hey, Brett. Who do you think that 30% is? I filmed a bunch of videos actually at the March for Life in, I think it was in late January or February of this year. I was there doing some Daily Wire stuff and there was a huge collection of pro-life Democrats, of pro-life progressives. They were out there like saging, doing dances. It was a whole thing. First of all, Democrats are conservatives. Let's get that straight. They're just a little more marketable. And second, you can't be a pro-life progressive. Sorry, get gay kept. We don't want you. So this is not just some right-wing extreme agenda that we have. And it's totally not a Republican issue. It's totally not. That's why all of the progressives on the Supreme Court, you know the ones, they also support overturning Roe v. Wade. This will fall yeah, on the young women who have been abused, who are victims of incest. This will fall on those who have been raped. Also, it's important to point out here, just to, this is an argumentative or logical fallacy. She's arguing based on the exception rather than the rule, and she's using this very small percentage of women who experience incest, who are raped, as the scapegoat, basically, to argue for abortion. Yeah, it's so weird that liberals are always bringing that up. Like, it's almost like there are multiple Republican states that prevent abortions even under those circumstances, and overturning Roe v. Wade would actually make those laws more punitive. But you know, liberals are always the ones talking about that. When in reality, 96 to 99 percent of abortions are done out of convenience because people want to evade responsibility. It is used as a form of birth control. And then that four to one percent is, you know, the rape, the incest, um, the health of the mother. Oh, hey, that's cool. You just made up stats. I love doing that. 100 percent of Brett Cooper's brain is made out of applesauce. Do you guys know that? That's real. Just like the where does life begin argument, the argument of intent only serves as a conservative talking point to just muddy the waters and take away from the actual important issue when it comes to abortion, which is bodily autonomy and not allowing the government to say what you can and can't do when it comes to medical procedures. Also, making the argument that abortion is bad because some people might use it to avoid responsibility, which is a really untrue and gross characterization of why people choose to abort, but whatever, that's actually a logical fallacy. You think you'd you know, not use those since you point them out all the time. Just kidding. She does like 15 in every video and it's all Ben Shapiro does on his show too. But when the right does it, it's actually facts and logic. But when the left does it, it's a logical fallacy. And that means that we should take human rights away from people. She's arguing based on the exception rather than the rule. And she's using this very small percentage of women. You know what guys? I think Brett's right on this one. We shouldn't be so vague with our numbers. So let's get specific. According to the CDC, there were 630,000 abortions in 2019. 1% of that is 6,300, and 4% of that is 25,200. And according to Brett, if that amount of women are victims of rape or incest, I guess just deal with it. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, abortion does not become illegal. It is sent back to the states, and the states will decide. Thank you so much for your think tank talking point, Brett. I've already heard it from Ben Shapiro like 12 or 13 different times, but I mean, to be fair, if I put the video on mute, I would have thought he was talking anyway, so. Stop fucking saying that overturning Roe v. Wade doesn't make abortion illegal. It literally does in multiple states. New York, California, all of the blue states, you will be just fine. You can't just say you're in a blue state, you'll be fine, when 70% of the entire country thinks that Roe v. Wade should be the law. The majority of people in most red states would rather have access to abortion care than not. But because Republicans control those legislatures and the Republican strategy revolves around as few voices being being heard as possible, I guess tough luck for them, huh? If only we had some sort of federal guideline or, you know, law that we could apply. Apparently, like, violence and rioting is only okay when it's their cause, you know. When they burn down buildings, it's fine. It's out of love. Republicans will clutch their guns so fucking tightly and yet become the biggest pussy babies whenever the idea of a target window being broken comes up. It doesn't even have to actually happen. They just think about it too much and they start crying and shaking and throwing up. Uh, I'm in an open carry state. I'll be fine. Yeah, same. It's good to see that the Rittenhouse protesters have found a new calling. That was good. That was good.
Yeah, I'm really not afraid of pro-choice protesters, to be quite honest. I think I'll be just fine. What are you gonna do, Brett? You gonna shoot people to death for burning down the TJ Maxx? What a brave freedom fighter you are. Guys, she's definitely not controlled by corporations. Guys, she's not even a little bit controlled by corporations. She just wants to shed blood for the Walmart. Beautiful affordable Walmart. Brett Cooper's content is awful. And unlike your typical conservative, it's not just in substance, but it's in execution as well. It's astounding that she's managed to capture the audience that she has, but at the same time, the plethora of resources given to her by the fossil fuel funded Daily Wire must make video production pretty easy and quick. I feel like I can see pretty quickly where this channel is heading. I mean, it's probably managed by the same people who manage the Daily Wire channel, maybe even the Turning Point and PragerU channels because the strategy feels somewhat similar. And I mean, we know the Daily Wire is not exactly doing great. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the dirty money that these creeps are funneled doesn't really ever go away, no matter how badly they fumble it. So these channels never really end up completely going away, but I'll look forward to the day in a few years when I can look back at it and see it struggling just as badly as the rest. Welcome to the family, Brett. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please click like if you had a good time or subscribe for more videos just like this every week. Channels like mine are actually independent and the best way to support me is watching the video, sharing it with friends, or going to my Patreon. Be sure to tune in for my next video where I make a pizza. Bye. Thank you so much to my incredible supporters over on Patreon. You guys are the best.